Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Kira McGran. I'm a queer cyborg game designer living in Columbus, Ohio. And today I'm gonna talk to you about how I write and design games with chronic pain. So after more than five years of going to doctors and trying to figure out what type of pain I have, um, the guess, the diagnosis that I have is fibromyalgia. If you know anything about fibromyalgia diagnosis, it's basically an elimination diagnosis. Like if it's not all these other things, it's probably fibromyalgia, but we don't really know what it is for sure. So my pain could really be from anything, um, which is great. <laughs> I've looked into a ton of stuff. I'm not, I'm always open to suggestions, but I'm not really looking for more things, um, more information. But it's more that, uh, you know, I, my my pain is a mystery. We don't really know what it is. It is basically nerve pain. Like I always have some kind of pain every day. On a good day, I'm like at a two. On a bad day, I'm like at an eight or a nine. Um, and that pain comes in a variety of layers. It's like, I usually have this overall nerve pain, which you can kind of tell um, it's nerve pain because it feels like um, fire. If it's like a fiery pain. It's ambient and it's kind of everywhere. You can't really tell where it's coming from. Um, I also have uh, muscle pain. Um, you know, my muscles tense up because they're triggered by this other pain. Um, and that, you know, makes all the connective tissue and the ligaments, um, and tendons, all those things, <laughs> anatomy, um, hurt as well. It makes everything really tight. The majority of my pain is like in this region, um, front and back, uh, you know, and around here. Uh, and it, no matter what I do, um, this pain does not go away. It is always present. Um, so all I can do is manage this pain with a combination of things, um, you know, with, with drugs, uh, therapy, massage, um, uh, you know, all the things that I do basically for, I have like a lacrosse ball that I use, um, to massage my connective tissue. Um, I go to a rheumatologist every few months to try new things and see what kind of new information they might have. Um, I was actually just there yesterday. I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like, I have, let me see. I have these, uh, got these shots in my um, trigger points is what they call them on both sides of my neck uh, to basically, they inject a lidocaine directly into your muscle and tissue. Um, so that it basically just numbs the pain for a certain period of time. Uh, after after having this for a day, uh, even that's not really working too much for me. Like my pain today is still, uh, it's pretty, it's kind of bad actually today. I'm, I'm at a seven. Um, and, you know, I think the biggest problem when it comes to writing stuff with this isn't just the physical pain that I'm in, but that the pain causes a brain fog. So essentially, I just can't think straight because of my pain. Like often I'm so used to the feeling of the pain, I won't even notice that I'm in pain. I'll notice I'm like confused or slow thinking or my, you know, my texting uh, or writing, you know, on the internet is maybe has a lot of spelling errors or isn't making sense. And then I'll like analyze my body and be like, am I in pain? And I'll go, oh yes, I'm in a lot of pain. That's what's going on. It's kind of hard to describe how I feel. That's a basic description. Um, there, Lady Gaga has the same thing I do. Um, she did a Netflix documentary on it. It's pretty great. Um, it may, I cried many times <laughs> watching it. Uh, it's hard to be a creative person and deal with pain. Um, and also there's this artist, Marnie Manning, um, on Instagram, she has this pain illustration series. It's really cool, um, of like a tiger, you know, being like, 
stabbed with needles and swords and like a lot of times that's how I really relate to that. I really love her imagery. I feel that way sometimes. So that's just kind of like a basic summary of what I deal with on a daily basis. There are many more details um, that I don't want to uh, bore you with. It's just really complicated and uh, you know maybe if, if people are interested I'll, I'll go into more detail. I'm happy to share. It's not like a person a personal information thing, it's just a lot. Uh, and yeah, it's, it is actually hard for me to talk about sometimes, um, but I think that it's important to talk about it because then, um, you know, someone else can find, uh, you know, comfort or empathy um, in what I'm dealing with and what they're dealing with. I found a lot of comfort in hearing other people's stories a lot of the time. So I have a list of ways that I've worked up uh, that kind of help me deal with this physical issue um, while I'm writing and designing games, because <laughs> obviously it's a huge hurdle. Um, so I have five things. <laughs> so number one, this is a big one, I try to just work anyway. Um, you know, I'll sit down at my desk or wherever or lay down or sit on the couch like I basically create an environment where it is most comfortable and feels the best to work. And I will try to get something done. It could be, you know, sending off a bunch of emails uh, for contacts or, you know, submitting things that I want to contribute to, uh, working on a list in my uh, Hobonichi journal of, um, you know, inspirations for something that I have coming up, uh, or just like sitting down to a bigger project and trying to knock out a few pages. I might not get as much as I wanted to get done, but at least I will get something done. <laughs> something is better than nothing, and that makes me feel better about um, whatever I'm working on, you know, creatively, instead of like just losing a day. I might have lost that day, but at least I got a little bit done. Okay, number two is that I try to optimize my writing and designing time. So I've figured out that um, I usually can utilize the energy that I have in the morning um, and the clear headedness to uh, work better in those conditions. Like basically my symptoms in the morning are not as bad as they are at night. So, you know, my, my optimal work time I've actually figured out is like between uh, 11 in the morning and three in the afternoon. So I usually just try as hard as I can to work during those hours and get something done. And then another thing I do is try to work as much as possible and write as much as possible um, during days when I'm feeling my best. So if I have very low pain, you know, maybe I'm at a two, I am like clear headed, thinking, ready to go. Uh, I just like knock, knock out as much as I can, um, as many projects as I can. Because it's usually on those days that I get the most writing and design done. And then I can kind of make up for lost time on days that, you know, I couldn't do anything at all, for example. Number three is the hardest one for me. Um, and it's not beating myself up over lost time. So, you know, there's going to be days when I know I'm just not going to be functional and I have no control over that and there's kind of nothing I can do. And I just have to let that go, like, and forgive myself and be patient uh, and, you know, basically just let the pain happen. It's hard because I know how productive I could be um, if I was feeling better. Like, I know how much I could do and so I feel like this loss, um, and kind of like a, it's like a self-esteem hit, like, because I feel like I'm not doing as good as I could be, and I, I know that I'm not. Um, and so I just, just have to be really forgiving. Forgiveness is something that I think is really important um, with my chronic illness. And I just try to make up for it later. So, you know, forgive and move on. Number four, um, working from home is amazing. <laughs> Like, I can basically structure my days however I need to around my pain. I can make my own schedule, I can work when it's best for me, I don't have to work around someone else's schedule or work every day for a certain amount of hours. I can work more one day and less another day to make up for it. I can take long breaks and move around if I need to. I can step away for an hour at a time and do some yin yoga or um, just kind of chill and lay down on the floor. 
take deep breaths, do meditation, whatever I need to do, and then come back refreshed. So that, that has been such a lifesaver for me. Number five is prepping myself for the best possible work environment. So basically what that means is if I'm going to sit down and be creative, uh, put a lot of you know heart and soul and energy and work into design and writing, um, that I prepare myself for that. So it's kind of, I don't know, I feel like it's like a monk or a samurai thing to do. Like, that, sorry, that might be racist, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like uh, that type of idea where you're like, prepping yourself to do something big. So like I do a lot of self care, um, you know, in the morning I will chill for about a half hour or so, maybe like watching YouTube or Hulu. Um, and then, uh, you know, take all the painkillers I need, make sure I get enough sleep, eat an amazing breakfast, uh, that's going to give me the energy to kind of go on throughout the day. You know, basically, do as much healing ahead of time so that my body and my mind are like prepared to sit down and then create. So, you know, try to front that self care instead of, or maybe bookend it. I usually bookend it actually. I'll do it in the beginning and then I'll like do a lot of writing and designing. And then at the end of the day, I will also self care. I will know when to stop. Uh, and recharge and make sure that I am prepared for the following day. So those are my five tips with how I write and design games with chronic pain. Um, how do you manage your chronic illness and your game design writing? Um, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends because I post new vids every few days. Uh, and check out my Patreon if you want to support me. Thanks so much everyone. See you next video.